Hi, I'm David. Hi, I'm Yelena. Welcome to our beautiful studio in Toronto. This is our new studio, which we just opened three days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so this is our first YouTube. And of course, Connie. Mr. Connie is here, here with us too. Hello, Connie. Making a special appearance. appearance. Yeah. And before you ask, Goku's out Zooming with his friends somewhere in the forest. He'll be around though for in future shots, but we'll be doing our, uh, our tutorials from here from now on. And you could always come and see us in person, right? Uh, AshtangaToronto.com is our studio website. We'd love to have you. But if you can't make it here, we're going to bring the teaching to you on YouTube. And uh, today we're going to be looking at Prasarita Padottanasana, A, B, C, D. Uh, Prasarita Wide Padottanasana Foot Intense Stretch Pose. Wide Foot Forward Bent, we say. But before we go any further, make sure to subscribe, to comment, maybe let us know what else you want to see, and of course, like. Mm -hmm. Very important. Okay, uh, so these postures that we're about to look at, there's four of them that are under this group. They're part of the fundamental sequence of poses in the Ashtanga series. Fundamental, it, it always sounds like it means those are the important ones. They're all important. These are the standing postures that we do from uh, Parangushtasana all the way up to Parsvotanasana, the one with the hands in reverse prayer. Those it's 11 poses in total comprise the, the fundamental sequence. And uh, we've mentioned this probably many times before, but these are the poses that you always do after, of course, your sun salutation A and B, and before whatever series you're practicing that day. So they're kind of, you do them always as part of your practice. Yeah, we say a life sentence. So uh, the... There's two things that we're going to focus on. Um, the hardest thing about <laughs> Prasarita Padantasana is usually the vinyasa count, knowing uh, what breath and what movement go together. So we're going to go over that with you. And then, of course, we'll also be looking at um, some alignment tips and uh, ways to meet the conditions of the vinyasa. Um, there's a little bit of awkwardness to the count because what we've had so far uh, in the sequence. <laughs> what kind of thinks about this whole thing? <laughs> yeah. What we've had so far in the sequence has been very uh, even, you know, um, uh, it's been pretty symmetrical. Now uh, we've got some unevenness in the vinyasa count. So uh, Prasarita Padasanasana A. The vinyasa count is different than Prasarita Padottanasana B. But it's same as C. Yeah, A and uh, D are the same, and B and C are the same. I just added to the confusion. <laughs> yeah, as you do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but I'm also going to confuse you now too. We're going to, uh, we'll go through the vinyasa sequence first, okay? And then we can, um, we can kind of break it down a bit more. Okay. So, as always, you've just finished Parshvakanasana A and B, and from here you go to Samastiti, same standing. Inhale, Prasarita Padasanasana A, Yikam, step to the right and catch your waist. So that's all on one inhale, feet are pointing forward, hands are on the hips, elbows point back, and then Dwe, exhale, Fold forward, hands to the floor between the feet. Fingers in line with the toes. Inhale here. Prini, exhale, fold into the state of the asana. So the state of the asana means the vinyasa that you hold. And of course, it's five counts, five breaths. Drishti is the nose, nasagrai drishti, tip of the nose. One, two, three, four, five. Chitwari, inhale, straighten your arms, head up. Exhale. No count, no movement. So you just stay there. And then on the next inhale, pancha, catch your waist, come all the way up. 
And then again, exhale, no count, no movement, just stay there. That was A. B, yikam, inhale, arms up. Dwe, exhale, catch your waist. Inhale again. And then trini, exhale, go down, head to the floor. Holding the waist, still squeeze the elbows together behind again. Gaze on the nose. Five breaths here. And then chitwari, inhale. After those five breaths, you'll come all the way up. Exhale, no count, no movement again. Si, yekam, inhale, arms up. Due, exhale, reach back, interlock your fingers behind your back. Inhale again, no count, no movement. Prini, exhale, fold into the state of the asana. Nastakara drishti for all of these, so maybe I'll stop saying it. And then reaching the arms away from your back, five breaths, one, two, three, four, five. Chitwari, on the next inhale, come all the way back up. Exhale there. No count, no movement. D, last one, yekam, inhale, like A, catch your waist. And then dwe, exhale, halfway down, this time catch your big toes, first two fingers. Inhale again here, no count, no movement. And then prini, exhale, fold into the state of the asana, take five breaths. One, two, three, four, five. Chitwari, inhale, straighten the arms, head up. Exhale, no count, no movement. Pancha, on the inhale, catch your waist, come all the way up. And then exhale, samastiti. Oof. This is always like uh, the breaking point for teaching uh, people when they come. Because when, uh, when people come to learn from us um, at our new studio in Toronto, then uh, we, we teach them Mysore style, which is self-practice. Everybody's in the room practicing together, um, but going through the sequence at their own pace. So when new people come, one of the big challenges is memorizing. You know, we teach the, a pose at a time, and we make sure you've memorized the last pose before we teach the next one. Usually, it's hard, right? At first, Surya Namaskara, Sun Salutations, and you start to get the hang of it, and then you do toe hold and hand to foot, triangle, side angle, and then you're thinking, okay, it's getting, I'm getting it, I'm getting good at it. And then you get here, and it's so confusing. It is, but it's just part of it. It's just part of it. But you can see some people like kind of okay. What I do is I just let it be kind of messy at first. At first, what we look for is that you remember what the arms are doing. So we want to make sure that out of four, you know in each one what the arms are supposed to hands do. Hands on the meaning, floor, yeah. hands on the waist, interlock the fingers, fingers. And then catch, catch your toes. toes. Yeah. And then the stuff in between all that lifting or not lifting the arms, we kind of are not so picky about that at first. And then it starts to make sense. And there is a pattern to it, as we mentioned. And, and then once you kind of tune into it and you relax a little bit, then it's, to me, makes the whole thing make sense. Yeah. yeah. And it is important. The, the more um, specific you can be, in the count and the movement, the more attention you're bringing to your practice, which is, is kind of the point of a sadhana, of a personal yoga practice. It's cultivating focus. So we, uh, we say that uh, physical precision is embodied focus. It's a way for you to express focus by trying to hit all of these, uh, different, yeah. Yeah, all these different vinyasas. One thing that's so interesting to me, I've gone through love-hate relationship with every single pose and every single movement in, that I've had to do in my practice, but prasaritas have always been one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Like I've never disliked doing them. I just really like, because they're such an overall body um, pose and then they also really connect you with your breath when you when you start to pay attention like the breath is such a priority and there's something that's so calming about that so i always always i have yet not to like them let's put it that way okay maybe that's coming maybe by the end of today you'll hate them no uh okay so should we, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the vinyasa and we'll start to integrate some um, tips on how to kind of uh, do the vinyasa very cleanly without extra movements, right? Um, and we can talk about some uh, alignment stuff as well. One of the things that I don't think we need to spend a lot of time on here because we have another video that talks about it is yoga butt, which is, uh, which is an injury. Uh, it's a hamstring tendinopathy. 
the medial hamstring gets little uh, little tears or agitated, especially in wide leg forward bends. So this is our first wide leg forward bend that shows up in the practice. And we have a whole video on how to protect yourself from that. Uh, I'll mention it now, but we're not going to spend a ton of time. No. But I'll put a link up to the video here. So make sure to check it out. And as far as I remember in that video, we do talk about prostorita specifically as yeah, yeah. a point where a lot of this um, injury happened. So go there and, and check it out. Yeah. Okay. All right. So again, from Samastiti, Prasarita Padatanasana A. First inhale, yekam. Step to the side. Catch your waist. Okay? Catch your waist. When we do a leg class, we just test people. We just say yekam, inhale. And we see what people do. Half the room is like, not sure. Catch your waist. And that's it. Then on the next exhale, Dwe, go down, reach down and put your hands on the floor. And when you put your hands down, just straighten your arms, hands down. Don't bend your elbows to put your hands on the floor, right? That's an extra movement. Why go down if you're going to have to come back up again? So Dwe, exhale, keep the arms straight, hands on the floor and fingertips in line with the toes. Don't try to deepen by bringing your hands back. The cue is fingertips in line with the toes. Okay? So that's our position in Ashtanga. And then you inhale here. So prasarita, you're going to see a bunch of uncounted breaths. When there's no count, no vinyasa count, there's no cue. So nothing happens. So all we're doing is inhaling. And then trini, exhale, fold into the state of the asana. Every state of the asana is entered into on an exhale, and it's always trini in the prasarita padasanasanas. Fingertips in line with the toes still. Yelena's is pushing into the hands. Elbows might be behind the wrists. That's fine. That's not an alignment issue because there's not a lot of pressure on the, the wrists. But she is pushing into the hands to help deepen the hip flexion. You can see her back is pretty straight, and she's bringing the torso between the legs. Make sure you're not just bringing your head down between your legs. Try not to round the back too much. And same thing you know, with the arch. Don't uh, extend your neck and come towards the forehead. So nice straight line there. And then containing the sits bones. This is the yoga butt thing. Holding the sits bones down while you straighten the legs. So don't lead straightening the legs by lifting through the back of the, sits, through the, back of the hips, the sits bones. Try to keep the sits bones pulling down and then engage your legs. Push down through the feet so the legs are strong, active. Okay, and then inhale, chitwari. Straighten the arms so we're back into that dwe position. That's where we started. Exhale here again, no count, no movement, nothing happens. On the inhale, pancha, catch your waist, come all the way back up with the breath. And then exhale, again, no count, no movement, nothing happens. You just stay there, holding your waist. So remember on Iikam, on the last one, we stepped out and we caught the waist. Now it's different. For B, Iikam, inhale, lift the arms up, arms stretch out to the side. And then Dwe, exhale, go back to the waist. I know, it's kind of a redundant movement, right? But remember, it's part of the tradition, you got to do it. Inhale again here, no count, no movement. Don't do a back bend here. Everybody always does this, you know, sort of, I don't know what's going on, but we're not supposed to do that. That, that would be um, an instruction. That would be a vinyasa if there was one. There's no movement. So you just inhale, collect yourself internally. And then trini, all on the exhale, keep your hands on your waist as you fold. Try to bring the crown of the head towards the floor. Just try. If your head is off the floor, that's no problem. I'm sure you're still feeling a stretch in the hamstrings. This time, watch your arms. The tendency here is to kind of forget about the arms and the elbows collapse out to the sides. Squeeze between your shoulder blades slightly to hold the elbows together. Press your fingers into your lower belly to help you collect uh, the lower belly in so the transverse abdominis are active. And then on the next inhale, after five breaths here, Chitwadi, come all the way back up. So that's all on that one breath. Exhale there, no count, no movement. C, yekam, inhale, stretch the arms, like B. 
Dwe, exhale, reach back, hands into position. Again, you inhale, no count, no movement, nothing changes. And then exhale, Krini, fold into the state of the asana. Stretching the arms away from you. So notice that Yelena keeps the elbows a little bit soft. Try not to get movement out of your arms by hyperextending the elbows. Okay? It's probably not really uh, what you want to do in this pose. Try to keep the work in the shoulders by slightly internally rotating the upper arms and then reaching the arms away. If you feel like there's work in the shoulders, that's good. Okay. And then five breaths here. Again, watch your head here. A lot of people try to bring the arms down by um, bringing the head, the chin to the chest and really rounding. Um, try not to cheat. So limit the work to the shoulders, to the arms. Don't worry if the arms don't touch the floor. And then on the next inhale, Chitwari, you come all the way up, still holding the arms in that same position. Exhale here. No count, no movement. Okay, last one. D, Yekam, inhale, you catch your waist, like A. Dwe, exhale, halfway down, catch the big toes, straight arms again, like A, remember? So you don't fold, bend the elbows, and then straight. Inhale here, no count, no movement. And Trini, exhale, bending the elbows and fold, head towards the floor. Same thing like B here, if you're not paying attention, your elbows are going to collapse away from your legs. So just cue yourself to bring the elbows towards the shins. It's not that they have to touch. Just feel like you're toning around the shoulders, keeping the arms under your control, elbows over the wrists, and you can press the um, index and middle finger, the backs of the fingers down into the floor and pull your toes forward away from the heels to help you with a little bit of external rotation in the arms. Five breaths here. And then inhale, Chitwari, lift your head, lift your chest back to straight arms. Exhale, no count, no movement. Pancha, inhale, hands on the waist, come all the way back up. And then this time, exhale, back to Samastiti. Whew. That's a lot. <laughs> you did talk a lot. <laughs> There's a lot to tell you. <laughs> So one of the things that we get asked um, here is the distance between the feet and in general um, about the legs. So the distance actually changes depending on your body proportions as well as your flexibility or lack of flexibility. So what we want to make sure is that when we step our feet apart, we don't step longer or wider than the leg length. So your own kind of leg length, because at that point, if you overstep just with the idea that you got to get the top of your head on the floor, you might be doing a completely different pose. It starts to look more like a, what do they call Like side splits. Kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. It starts to get too, too wide. So yeah, that's about it. That's as wide as you want to go. And then if the head's not touching the floor, well, in time it will come down. But also the body proportions make a big difference in this pose. So if you have shorter legs and longer torso, it means probably you're going to step a little bit closer together because your torso length is going to make it uh, but easier. But that works with the leg leg thing because if you have well, shorter true, legs, yeah. then it's a shorter step. Yeah. And then so same thing. And then wider, you might have to step wider. Usually how it changes is that when you're starting your practice if, if unless you've been doing something else that lengthens your hamstrings you have to step wider to get your head closer to the to floor, the floor yeah. and then as you develop more flexibility in the hamstrings more movement in the hips yeah. you can start to bring the feet together because another thing that you might notice is that when you're doing a and d which involve your arms on a you're using your hands to push into the floor and b you're again using your you're holding onto the toes you might notice that your fold is deeper because you rely on your upper body strength to fold. But then when you're doing B and C, your arms are doing something else. And so it might be harder to get the top of your head on the floor. And so again, that's something that with time changes and you learn how to use your core um, to find more of that lengthening action. And then gravity, of course, always helps. Gravi you're kind yeah, of, gravity helps. But yeah, you've yeah. got to like actively flex the hips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And then the, the other thing that you got to watch is when we step to the side, you want the outsides of your feet to be parallel with your mat. So if you're looking at that from the top, it might feel like you actually turn your toes a little bit inwards. And that's just because of the shape of our foot. So that's one of the things you want to watch. And then look for what, what is your tendency? Are you collapsing this way? And if that's the case, then you got to activate sort of these inner muscles, your adductors, and make sure that your weight is evenly distributed across your whole foot. And that way you'll also prevent, it can get really uncomfortable and can start to cause a lot of pain as well if you just let yourself collapse. So the legs have to be active to provide full support. I'd, I'd say if you're newer to the practice, yeah. then probably you will feel this that work, like the stabilizing work. Part of the soreness is just developing the, the strength there, but yeah, it, sometimes it can be um, reduced if, you, if you're rolling to the outsides of the Because there's so much happening. You're trying to memorize yeah. what you're doing, like the whole body's moving. And so then the easiest thing to do is kind of relax and forget about your legs because they just support you no matter what. And don't be afraid to bend your knees a little bit mm -hmm. to help you if it's excruciating. So we'd follow the same rules of forward bending. This is a forward bend, right? Where we want to try to distribute the, the stretch sort of across the whole back line of the body. If you have short hamstrings uh, and your sits bones are locked into position, the tendency is often then to try to compensate by rounding the back, you know? You're thinking head down to the floor, and it's not that you've decided to round your back, it just, it just happens because you're not getting the movement of the, from the pelvis. I would reduce that because you don't, you don't wanna to put too much stress around your back like this. So in that case, I would probably soften the uh, the hamstrings by bending the knees slightly, and that's going to let me get a little more movement out of the hips and straight in the back. And then over time, you know, as you feel more comfortable, you could work at straightening the legs. Yeah, but it is a deep. Yeah, all four of them are really deep, deep poses, and so just be mindful again where you're feeling the stretch, and you always want to move it into this part of your of your leg. Okay, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, did you like it? Did you learn something? Let us know. There's a comment section. Just tell us below. And if you want to see something else, let us know that too. Mm -hmm. Or if you want us to go more into details about certain things, we can do that too. Yeah, we're here for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and make sure to like, subscribe, all that stuff. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.